Today on Mike Attempts, replacing a chainsaw piston and cylinder. In a previous video, I attempted to repair four free chainsaws. This Husqvarna 440 had low compression, so I set it aside assuming it needed a new piston and cylinder. I was able to find aftermarket parts for around 50 bucks, so I decided it was worth fixing. Let's see if we can bring it back to life. After removing the muffler, I'm unable to see any scoring on the piston, but it's very dark in color. The handle is held on by three screws. I'll remove two of the three fuel tank screws. The third tank screw is located here, but I'm going to leave that one in for now. Next, remove the starter assembly. After removing the wires from their channels, the air cooling shroud lifts right out. Now I can remove the ignition module. Pull up to disconnect this wire. Onto the carburetor. Squeeze the tabs to release the primer bulb. And push the fuel lines off with your thumbnail. Three long screws secure the carb to the cylinder. With a flathead screwdriver pushed against the rubber support, the filter holder assembly can be released. Push in this little tab while pulling up to remove the throttle linkage guide. With some wiggling, I was then able to remove the filter holder assembly. The only things left holding this carb in are this little plastic clip, and the fuel supply line.
Sometimes you need to twist the fuel line to break it free before you can remove it. The insulation assembly just pulls off. To gain access to the screw securing the cylinder, I need to finish removing the fuel tank. With the third tank screw removed, I can pull the fuel lines through the holes and set the tank aside. Hold the flywheel down while pulling up on the cylinder. I don't see any scoring, but the piston ring is stuck fully compressed into the groove. Remove the circlips with needle nose pliers. While supporting the crankshaft, pound out the wrist pin. Mine was very tight. The crankshaft and needle bearing both seem alright. I assumed the dark color was baked on, but I was able to shine it up with a little carb cleaner. I oiled both needle bearings prior to installing the new piston. The dark areas on the piston and inside the cylinder are slightly tacky, so I don't know what happened. This saw didn't look like it had much use, so before taking it apart, I assumed it had been ran without two-stroke oil added to the fuel. But since there's no scoring, oil must have been used in the fuel, but maybe not the right type? I already have the replacement parts, but if I could remove the stuck piston ring, the cylinder and piston might be fine after a good cleaning. I'm not sure, but if you think you know what killed it, please leave me a comment below. I need to transfer the inlet pipe, the anti-vibration spring, and the cylinder gaskets to the new cylinder. Usually, the main complaint with aftermarket cylinders is rough intake and exhaust ports, but this one looks really good. I used some light oil to lube everything up for reassembly.
New gaskets weren't included in my kit, but the original ones seem to be in excellent shape. As always, see the description below for links to the parts and tools I used. I installed the first serve clip by making sure one end was in the groove while twisting the other end to compress the clip and snap it in. Lube up the ring and piston. Line up the end of the ring with the pin in the groove and carefully work it on. Don't stretch the ring too far. It could break. Lube the pin, line up the piston with the hole in the crankshaft, and push it in from the side without the circ clip installed. Make sure the arrow on the top of the piston is pointing towards the exhaust, which is at the front of the saw. Install the second circ clip to secure the pin. Lube the inside of the cylinder and compress the piston ring with your fingers while lowering the cylinder. If your cylinder is flared at the bottom, like this one, it should compress the ring while the piston slides in. If not, you could use a zip tie to compress the piston ring and then cut it off when it falls down around the crankshaft. You could use thread locker on the cylinder screws, but they didn't seem to have any on them originally, so I didn't bother. I popped the spark plug back in to keep debris out while putting everything back together. Reassemble in reverse order. When reinstalling the ignition module, the bottom screw allows you to adjust the gap on the left. Just try to make it even with the gap on the right. I used a screwdriver to gently encourage the wires down into the channels. The screw with the unthreaded tip goes into the rubber support. Like this. The carb on the 445 was much easier to remove and reinstall.
The primer bulb works by pulling fuel from the tank through the carb and then pushing it back into the tank. The line from the carb goes to the short post on the bulb while the line going back to the tank connects to the long post. I cannibalized the oil pump from this saw to repair one of the others, so I need to replace that too. The clutch has little notches where you can insert a punch and whack it to remove. It wasn't very tight because I had it off to remove the original oil pump. If you're not able to get the clutch to release, remove the spark plug and shove in some clean cotton rope to keep the piston from moving while hammering the punch. I have another video on my channel that shows the process in detail if you'd prefer more instruction than what I've given here. This is the piece that drives the oil pump. The old one wouldn't turn at all, which caused the teeth to be destroyed. The new aftermarket pump isn't made quite as well as the original, but I think it'll work just fine. Because of the flats on the sides of the oil pump cylinder, you can't install it wrong. I lubed up the needle bearing before dropping it onto the shaft. The clutch will self-tighten when you run the saw. The compression test for this saw, from my previous chainsaw repair video, was only 35 psi. In that video, I had mentioned I borrowed the compression tester from a neighbor, and an extremely generous subscriber surprised me with a compression tester of my own. So let's try out my new compression tester to see what it has now. Looking great at around 140 PSI. I decided to install a new spark plug to avoid any issues the old plug might have from being overheated. The white smoke is just the assembly oil burning up. Even with the high and low speed jets out one and a half turns, it took me another 10 to 15 minutes adjusting the carb until it was running good. The oil pump is working good. Maybe a little too good. Let's see how it works. runs and cuts great. Feel free to rate this video, add your comments and questions below, and subscribe for more.